This video was originally recorded at the Force for Good class series at Tibet House, New York in February 2018. To learn more about this ongoing series happening at Tibet House and online, please visit tibethouse.us. Actually, I learned something marvelous from a friend yesterday that I had never heard. So it's to show you, in 50 years, you can always hear something new. And there's a thing about the realization of, <laughs> of, of emptiness or clear light in the oral tradition, in the Tibetan tradition. And it says, uh, one, nothing appears to me. Right, well, and you, that has a double possible meaning, right? So nothing appears. So I see nothing. I know emptiness. I experience bliss. I am clear light. It's like four points. I really like it. I see nothing. I know emptiness. Because you can't see emptiness, because you're seeing is emptiness, of course. I experience bliss. I am clear light. Clear light means clear light of emptiness. It's like clear light is the, how the mind expands in the sense of an infinite emptiness. I just love that. Don't you love that? But what's great about it is that you don't, it doesn't claim that you see emptiness. People who think they see emptiness, actually what they did is saw nothing. They thought that was emptiness. Then they get all crazy, you know, they act like I'm, 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 I'm nipping and I'm enlightened or something. They get caught in the demon ghost cave, as they say in Zen, of thinking that they're enlightened. But I always like to tease such people. I say everybody's enlightened then, because everybody sees nothing every night when they fall asleep. And if they have trouble falling asleep, they take an ambient <laughs> in order to see nothing. In other words, become unconscious. So, so when you see nothing, then the knowing of emptiness, what does that mean? Negation is a strange thing. A negative cognition, think about it. A negation means, like, there's no elephant in this room. That's a negation. So then if you want to verify, check that out, you look everywhere where there could be an elephant. And then you don't find one. And then you say, yeah, there's no elephant in this room. But you never find a non-elephant, right? You just keep trying, and then you finally decide that, you know, it's, I've, I've looked enough. There's no closure, in other words. It just keeps opening. The, non, the, the lack of an elephant, it keeps opening up. So similarly, Knowing the emptiness after seeing nothing means that the nothing is not an object. It's not a place. I'm not in nothing. There is no nothing. Emptiness negates the nothing, in other words. So the nothing doesn't, doesn't get in the way of all the somethings. Do you follow me? In a way, the, the illusory experience of seeing nothing is an just the last illusion, in a way. And it's a dangerous one, actually. People can become... They say that... <clears throat> A nihilist, you know, our modern scientific people are nihilists because they think they have, no, they have a thing that in order, the Western Enlightenment, in order to get away from the church, they decided they didn't have a soul and they couldn't have a future life. And when they, they're just a biological robot and when they die, they're not going to exist. So they're going to become nothing, right? But, that, but that's only by theory. So they can still be reasoned with. And if they meet somebody who remembers a previous life or if they have themselves a dream or a memory of something that convinces them that maybe they had a previous deja vu, a very strong one or something, then they're still recoverable from the trap of thinking that really they're nothing, which is the trap of modern culture. Uh, but someone who's had an experience, like a contemplative experience of the realm of nothingness, which is a meditative state, and thinks that's a real thing, there's nothing you can say to them. They're just, they'll look, look right through you. That's a, that's a real nihilist, what they call a nihilist by experience. And they're really trapped in the demon ghost cave. They say, you know, Buddhist psychology. Their psychology is so sophisticated. 
from even in Hinayana, Theravada, you know, earliest form of Buddhism. Basic form of Buddhism. Okay? So, gate, gate, paragate. Gate means gone. So, that might be equatable to seeing nothing. Again, second gate, but I know emptiness, so I know whatever I see, if I really try to find it, it will disappear. So emptiness is the constant expansion, the opening of negation, of a sense of objectivity of whatever it is, including your immersion, your, your immersion in a state of nothingness, seeming state of nothingness, right? So knowing emptiness keeps you, they say emptiness is a medicine for becoming attached to the intrinsic objectivity of whatever you see or, or personally experience. Then by constantly opening what happens, your sense of boundary and your sense of self-enclosure melts. And we call that bliss, don't we? Like when you have a thrill, if you're a thrill seeker, you get on the Coney Island cyclone and you get so scared, you have terror when it goes like, like that. But then you, if, you, if you get past the fear, you have like a thrill where you sort of dissolve your normal sense of self. You never want to go out like, like this in some kind of terrible thing. It would be so fearful, you would absolutely recoil from it. Actually, I hate them. Make, I get dizzy. You know. But when I was little, I enjoyed them. Uh, or other kinds of aesthetic experiences where you seemingly melt. You lose your sense of boundary. You merge with the raga. You merge with the symphony. You merge with the aria. You merge with some beautiful thing. You know. So that's the experience of bliss, which is an ex which is it, when it's experienced, it's not seized. It's just it's given up. It's where you let go of yourself, you know. And then the thing of I am the clear light is just an affirmation, in a way. It's not that you see clear light; it's that you sort of infer clear light. Actually, that's a that's a little more complicated. That's sort of tantric, but that's the bodhi. That's the last one. Gate gate para gate para sam gate. You know, super gone, super totally gone. Those are two further stages of those four. And then the fifth one, Bodhi, enlightenment, all hail. That's like, I am clear light, you know. I am transparency. That's, it. That's Buddhahood, you know, right? And every single one of you is going to have that experience. You're going to be a Buddha. Because <laughs> you might as well. <laughs> Because there's no other way out of pain, out of the pain, actually, according to them. Because we are all infinite continua. So we want to be the most best continuum, and each of us. And the best continuum is to be a continuum of love and freedom and bliss. Wouldn't you say? It would be nicer to be blissful forever, wouldn't it? rather than be miserable forever. <laughs> And if you know you're going to be miserable forever, you're definitely going to do something about it. The reason that we're complacent in our materialist culture is that we think we just get annihilated by dying. Very sad. Recently, someone that we know uh, committed, jumped off a bridge. You know, young woman, wonderful young woman, but the tendency to depression, feeling very bereft and unhappy, jumped off a bridge. I think subliminally, that kind of reckless thing has to do with the idea that that will just annihilate the problems. But the problem there is, if you have a problem and you have a body, you have something, you have a space in which to work on the problem. If you have a problem and you eliminate the body, then all you are is the problem. So that's really not a really very good method of dealing with the problem, unfortunately. Okay. This video was brought to you in part through the generous support of the Tibet House U.S. membership community and viewers like you. To learn more about the benefits of Tibet House membership, including special tours with Robert Thurman and geographic expeditions, please visit TibetHouse.us. Trips in 2019 include Sri Lanka.